most crazy donation I've ever gotten. This guy donated a hundred bucks! Wait, what just happened? Here is to Mrs. Wild's trip to TwitchCon. Let's get some love in chat. Yangus? That you didn't mean to do that. You didn't mean to do that. That's an accident. Okay? That's an accident. Subscribers of this channel know that this is not my typical style of video. In fact, I've never done a video like this on my channel before. Most of the time, I'm a fun-loving, chill vibes kind of guy who plays video games that make you want to rip your hair out more than anything else. This is attempt number one, attempt number two, attempt number three, attempt number four. Die. Die. Let's go kill a siren. Absolutely disgusting. Yes! 66! Swallow our soul! My fans came to my channel and found a friend that played games they liked. Lured in by a silver-tongued devil and a healthy amount of clickbait. But this isn't a video on the morality or ethicality of clickbait. That's a topic for a completely different day. Today, the focus is on what happens after you get here. Because it has been overlooked until just recently, and its power is still very much unknown to most. And to be honest, this power scares me. To the bone. It's the reason why I share a little about myself to you. It's the reason why you interact with a duck and not a human. And it's the reason why I don't use a camera in any of my recordings. In the world of clicks, likes, and instant feedback gratification systems, a devil lives and freely breathes with such ferocity. It would be bad form not to speak of it with eloquence, and with a cadence of speech that evokes excitation in the upper echelons, glamorized in perpetuity within the annals of time past, and yet its existence within our future selves is still unknown. On Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on all platforms in between, a devil walks the halls, and in its claws it holds the keys to our hopes, dreams, emotions, and most importantly our finances. Today, my lovely viewer, we look into the dark side of content creation in the hopes that a guiding light and promise of hope may emerge. Today, I plead my case for parasocial relationships, their existence, necessity, and eventually a promise for a better tomorrow. It's only by open discussion that this fiend may lose strength, so without further ado, let's perform a deep dive into parasocial relationships, the lifeblood of content creators. So let's start basic. What is a parasocial relationship? It's not some new thing. Academic papers have been writing about the phenomenon since the mid-1950s, which I imagine coincides pretty closely with the explosion of visual feeds plastering all of those beautiful, hot, and hunky Hollywood acting folks on television sets across the globe. Whatever the reason for the interest back then, the definition for parasocial relationships is described as illusionary face-to-face -face interactions that lack mutuality between media users and media characters. This would have been more directed towards music stars at the time, as well as prominent television and movie stars. For me, the first one that comes to mind is the person who sings Somewhere Over the Rainbow in... Oh, uh, no, not that one. Judy Garland, the lead actress in The Wizard of Oz. These illusionary and imagined interactions with her favorite characters has led to some pretty crazy experiences like the notable trend of hashtag crockpot is innocent that spawned from a 2018 episode release of This Is Us when, by the way, spoilers incoming, Jack Pearson died from a crockpot lighting the house on fire, which then caused crockpot stock to drop 24% in two days, despite no real-life evidence that the kitchen appliance was any sort of fire hazard, to the point where the actor who plays Jack had to go on camera and talk about family unity, dish chili out of a slow cooker, and ship the hashtag crockpot is innocent. Wait, what? That actually happened? Well, I mean, it seems silly to get so worked up over a... You just want me to keep reading the script and let the big duck in charge handle the real decisions? Okay, fine. Wow, he might be a duck sometimes, but he acts like a real di- In this case, there was a social media campaign run by Crockpot that moderated the calming of the fans. Which brings forward something that just didn't exist in the 50s when parasocial relationships were first discussed. We now have direct links straight to our favorite creators on various platforms. YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and less public options like OnlyFans if you really want to get up close and personal with your favorite creators. The problem with this is that it's causing a wave of new parasocial problems of varying degrees and many prominent voices have spoken out against them. Personally, I recommend listening to any of Devin Nash's videos related to streaming and content creation. Parasocial relationships come up a lot within his sphere of content. Outside of that, several large streamers like Pokimane and Ludwig as well as mainstream educational content like TED Talks, have all taken time to talk about this because, well, it's a bit concerning. The intro to this video highlighted the dangers of parasocial relationships. 
exorbitant gifts to strangers, undying love, and in general obsession. These are the things that make headlines, so it should be obvious that a sizable percentage of the top research papers on this subject are related to the exploitation of PSRs. For example, an entire study was devoted to Kim Kardashian's parasocial communications over Facebook, finding that 44.6% of her posts were product endorsements, and nearly a third were posts about her family and friends, likely used to influence the parasocial bond she was fostering. The same study also found that the posts that were most intimate on her pages had the highest number of responses, suggesting that there was a strong parasocial component to these posts. This highlights one of the dangers of parasocial relationships really well that I already mentioned, the monetary gain and exploitation. Some companies have already begun to shield themselves from this criticism, but still actively exploit and or encourage parasocial relationships. Think of anything emotionally linked and ask, what's the motive for the company to do this? For example, think of egg donation companies. They regularly exploit parasocial relationships to better, quote, match donors with their recipients, all the while hiding or obfuscating the monetary components. Maybe a more relevant example to our discussion would be Patreon. Patreon also frames the situation as a means of supporting artists without the, quote, devaluing of art and creators. And yet, two components of parasocial relationships are easily noticed. First, the obfuscation of the monetary gain component to impress upon people the still sacred and anti-commercial status of the arts, and second, the commingling of relational work through a tiered, intimate medium. Together, this shifts the focus away from monetary compensation and towards that of a friend helping a friend. This concept is called relational labor, meaning regular, ongoing communication with audiences over time to build social relationships that foster paid work. And this is not new. It's pervasive everywhere where there's a free and paid option. You watch this video and I thank you for your support. Thank you, by the way. And from your ad viewing or premium membership, I collect maybe a couple dollars per thousand views. Now this might seem kind of silly for me to dig into. Like, Retro, why are you effectively undermining and exposing the mechanisms that make you money? Well. I mean, I hopefully don't, but I would much prefer to advocate for a more neutral and thorough understanding of parasocial relationships, as opposed to creating toxic and misrepresented understandings of the relationships we form. More on this later, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. And again, this stuff isn't new. The concept of someone being a patron of the arts is as old as the Sistine Chapel and other great works of art that we idolize. Maybe it's experts in your field or hobby, that's task attraction, or an attractive person to you, that's physical attraction or just someone that resonates with your goals and aspirations. What's new is that we now have so much more power to influence and talk to people that we idolize and adore. Parasocial relationships have become so much easier to form and maintain for both creators and consumers. Think back to our old friend Patreon, where you can earn a special place in an artist's heart, or get a hit of those digital hugs and kisses. Maybe they'll send you something nice if you pay enough. No, I'm not picking on Patreon for supporting artists. I only use them as an easy example of what parasocial transaction looks like. Patreon supporters are, for the most part, in tune with the relationship with those they support. In fact, the transparent nature of sites like Patreon and OnlyFans make them some of the least dangerous parasocial places. More dangerous are platforms like Twitch and YouTube, which by its nature creates an environment where PSRs can exist and grow rapidly. Past research by Rubin and McHugh found that there wasn't a correlation between the length of exposure to a character and the strength of the PSR. But this research was done in an era where shows were once a day, or once a week. Contemporary technologies that allow for binge-watching and back-to-back -back episodes and live streaming have since been confirmed to strengthen PSRs. Sitting and watching your favorite streamer on Twitch or binge-watching a series on YouTube or Netflix are new realities that are now forming and strengthening parasocial relationships over time, something that just didn't happen in the 1980s when the first study was conducted. Recent studies have also noticed that involvement alongside exposure plays an important role in affecting people's beliefs and attitudes. Which sounds kind of familiar to some websites. Perhaps you could name a couple interactive online experiences where people sit and chat with someone for hours and hours in real time. And I hope you're not watching this video being all high and mighty like, ugh, look at all those simps over there with their parasocial relationships, because no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Parasocial relationships are part of our existence as humans. They're the reason why we enjoy books, why the movie industry exists, why letters to a pen pal can be so meaningful. It is human existence itself that drives the parasocial relationship, and the parasocial relationship that drives the emotional feedback loop unto itself. And what better timing to do this video than during a Twitch drama episode between Pokimane and Ninja? For everyone, and I mean everyone, involved in that mess, whether you're a creator, consumer, anybody, congratulations. Parasocial relationship. And I truly don't mean that in a negative light. Parasocial relationships shouldn't be seen as a yes or no kind of issue. It's an entire spectrum of mostly healthy behaviors. Here's a table from a 2009 paper that was looking into parasocial relationships in relation to virtual reality. They identified and classified an entire spectrum of parasocial effects and behaviors, 
including sensory arousal, increased entertainment value, increased intercommunications, and collaboration. These are all very normal and very good effects that come from parasocial relationships. And for some people, building these online personas and relations with people is what keeps them going through the bad times. We have decades of research showing that fictional parasocial relationships can introduce audiences to new information, raise awareness about pro-social issues, and help shape positive behaviors. We were able to see the pain and suffering of chemical castration that was routinely done on gay men during World War II, all thanks to the performance put on by Eggs Benedict himself in the 2014 film, The Imitation Game. And consider the pain that was palpably felt worldwide when Robin Williams died by suicide, with the weeks and months following seeing an increase in outreach and support related to suicide prevention. We are literally reshaping our views for the better because of parasocial relationships. We feel better about ourselves because of PSRs, and studies have shown that we have increased performance in the presence of images of the people we hold PSRs with. Now I'm not saying that we should just forget about the right side of the spectrum, because those are all very important things that need to be discussed and brought to light. But you can't have the good without the bad. We are social creatures, and relationships are a drug to us. A drug that causes all manner of neurochemical cascades that lead to positive moods, companionship, and overall a better existence for all of us. Still need more proof? Well, you're talking to me right now. You've never met me before, but the words that I'm saying mean something to you, and the bond that we have means something. Just as the words of a fictitious character in a novel mean something. And don't you dare deny me that truth, because I've seen the lengths that Harry Potter fans will go to learn just an inkling more about their favorite character. It's all parasocial, and all very normal until it's not. So yes, I reject the concept of dismissing parasocial relationships outright, but I also reject the notion that we should condemn simps to a life of financial servitude. What needs to be talked about and thought about, especially when things like this happen, is that we have emotions and we care about each other and that this manifests itself in many different ways in many different circumstances. Whether you're caring for a collective body of people like a group of constituents, or your subscribers, or even something anthropomorphized like our hometown that we must protect, it's part of humanity, and the same mechanisms that propel the dangerous side of parasocial relationships are what are ultimately used in times of strife and hardship. Pokey, or any streamer for that matter, asking for support from her community is her calling on her parasocial relationships to effect change in this world using the same parasocial mechanisms that humanitarian efforts use to ask for donations to end world struggles. The real problem is that the current stigma towards parasocial relationships is limiting the positive impacts that influencers can have on the world. Instead of condemning people who stand someone, or flagrantly accusing someone of virtue signaling, maybe we should instead learn and understand how parasocial relationships happen, and use them to carve a path to a better future. Research has already shown a positive association between exposure to LGBT-related content in online news and on social media, and attitudes towards LGBT people. In essence, the parasocial worlds we build in our media of movies, television, and online forums shapes our outlooks. The same paper calls to focus what is called the parasocial contact hypothesis, which claims that parasocial contact may engender prejudice reduction, leading to less uncertainty of and deeper perceived intimacy with outgroup members, characterized by development of emotional bonds, affinity, and attraction. Parasocial relationships are a double-edged sword that we can use for harm or good and I personally advocate wholeheartedly to all content creators out there to take another look at parasocial relationships. Viewers on Twitch are, on average, consuming two hours of streams each day. Probably more. How can we leverage those relationships to push positive ideals, values, and pro-social considerations forward? And what future research can be learned about the impacts that streamers have? Should we corrupt ourselves and turn towards sculpting illusions of intimacy, or should we instead break up an individual from the object of their parasocial obsession? Why are we? Those that have a voice among the thousands or millions, not advocating for help to those that have low self-esteem to find their place in the world, or realize that perhaps the reason why people spiral towards the dark side of parasocial is because they feel socially rejected, and that they may see their favorite streamer or broadcaster as a goal for their own self to strive towards. To reject parasocial relationships outright and simply say, I'm not your friend, is not the correct solution. Rather, it's best to say that you cannot be their friend but you can help lead them to a better tomorrow. Maybe it's instead best to ask why specific people act how they act towards parasocial idols, and see if a better, healthier future can be built for everyone. If a decade of research into romantic and drama television suggests that consumption of such programs was significantly related to idealized expectations of marriage and satisfaction with their current relationship situation, and yes, that is a bit of a stretch for this conversation, then what can be gleaned from someone who feverishly follows an online personality? Are there things that streamer person can do to help and guide people that are reaching higher stages on the parasocial spectrum to bring them back to reality? It's too early to know the answer to this, 
However, just as education on realistic relationship beliefs and expectations may help buffer against the negative influences of romantic video games, it's possible to have open discussions like this that will aid in people's understanding and control over their parasocial relationships. Findings from Madison and Porter in 2015 found that parasocial thinking is purposive, and that it can be used as an extension and complement to one's social circle, but can't compensate for it, which suggests to me that those looking to get something more out of a parasocial relationship might just be craving interpersonal relationships but can't find a means of getting there given their life circumstance. There's so much more to this that we don't know yet. And honestly, the best thing we can do is have an open mind towards PSRs, and hopefully that'll lead us to a better tomorrow. And so ends my debate for parasocial relationships. An evil when overconsumed, but also the reason why fiction novels can exist. It's transactional just as many other human interactions are, and only a problem if we don't talk about it. We're still many years away from a proven solution to the problem of PSRs that spiral out of control. However, that's not to say that we can't push and advocate for more discussion and motivated learning on the subject. And so begins my call to action. Before I get into it, and if you've made it this far, I won't take more of your time other than to thank you, truly thank you, for considering a point of view that, in my opinion, needs to be heard by as many people as possible. So please share this with someone that has a negative view on parasocial relationships. It will do them good to hear an academic perspective from the other side of the debate. Now the plug. To quote one of the recent papers that I cited, future research should engage in direct conversation with creators and their fans to interrogate relational expectations from both sides of the market, and to develop a more robust picture of the connected lives of digital creative workers. To that end, I'll be in the comments if you want to talk about it further, and if you're a creator that wants to know more or set up an interview, reach out to my email. There's a lot of research that had to get cut or combined, but if you struggle with parasocial relationships and want to know how to better handle them, I'd be happy to do a live or recorded interview to spread awareness about this more. And of course, as is tradition for content creators to ask, consider subscribing to show your parasocial support for the content. It really does mean a lot, which I hope you can trust after this discussion, but I also understand if you can't. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.